All right, so now let's go ahead in this module and look at bonding. And we're gonna look at the forces and energies involved in bonding. So when we look at bond force and bond energy, we often look at these graphs uh, depicting the forces and energies associated with bonding uh, when things uh, are, when two objects are uh, close or far apart. And so we use the term interatomic spacing. So that's how close these two entities are. And then we look at force. And so in this case, the force is uh, negative and positive, where the positive uh, is termed uh, attractive. So we have a positive force, it's attractive. And then a negative force refers to repulsive forces. So these uh, pull things together, these uh, pull things apart. And this is a function of distance. Same thing with energy, potential energy uh, here. Only here we term the positive energy repulsive and the negative energy, energy uh, attraction. So this is kind of a convention that we have for those. But it's still um, plotted in the same interatomic space. And so how, how far or close up together two atomic or ions or whatever they are are. All right, so now that we've kind of gone over the basics of these uh, bond force, bond energy, what's on the axes, let's think about the forces involved. So for the force diagram, we have two forces acting on these bodies, an attractive force, which we term Fa, and a repulsive force, which we term Fr. The attractive force um, is basically the attractive force between two entities. What brings these two isolated atoms, for example, close together? And so if we think about from an atomic point of view, what does this is that um, charge, the various charge of these atoms or ions will do this. So for two neutral atoms, uh, or sorry, to any entities, the electrons would be attracted to the protons of the other entity. And so that's what's attractive about this. So um, that's this blue curve that we see. And so the shape of this means that uh, the attractive force goes up the closer. So the separation uh, here is less. So the less separation between these entities, the stronger that attractive force is. If we look at the repulsive forces, obviously if we have, and let me go to the next slide for this. Um, the repulsive force, if you think about two atoms, they're both going to have electrons or what we term the electron cloud. So the sum of all the electrons. Well, electrons are negatively charged. So those two will uh, be repulsed from one another. And so that overlapping of the electron cloud uh, is what generates the repulsive force. So this green curve that you see here is the repulsive for force. And so um, if they're really far apart, which is uh, like over here on the right, there's basically no repulsive force because those clouds are not close. But as we get them closer and closer, they start to overlap and the repulsive force takes off very drastically, much more drastically than you see for the, the attractive force. And so the sum of these two forces is the net force um, acting on these two entities. And so that's what we have over here. The net force is the sum of these two forces, and that's the red curve. So you see that overall there's a slight attractive force very far apart um, and then as we get closer uh, it becomes more and more positive but then it uh, drops off and becomes more repulsive as they get close together so the important thing here is uh, if you're looking at the, this diagram where the forces are zero right from looking at um, the the mechanics of this, uh, when we have zero forces, if you're thinking from physics, that's where uh, there will be no movement. Uh, so there won't be any um, force acting on it. 
the forces are zero. So that's a very important uh, area. That's where it's at balance. And so if we look at the same thing with energy, it looks very similar, only things are kind of flipped. So the attractive terms down here and the uh, repulsive terms down here. And the energy, if you remember from, from calculus, is basically like taking the integral of the force. So if you basically take this curve, this red curve, take the integral of it, you get the energy. That's how energy is defined. And so that force is equal zero is the low point in the energy or what we term the energy well. So the lowest energy is where it's the most stable. And then if we move them closer together, the repulsive term goes up. If we move them further apart, the attractive term goes up and they all want to go back to this uh, low point in the energy. So that's where we have what we term equilibrium. So up here at forces equal zero or at the minimum. So this is at the same position in R. So that's that distance is where the sum of the forces is zero, the energy is at the lowest. So this is our equilibrium bond distance. So this is how far apart these two entities are in which they are stable. So that's important when we're talking about bonding. All right, so that equilibrium bond energy, so if we go back here, this uh, E naught term, so where that energy is the lowest, uh, the most uh, attractive uh, in the negative area, that is the equilibrium bond energy. And so that term controls a lot of material properties. So the, wow. sorry, sorry for my dogs there. Uh, so the lower that is, the more, more and more negative, um, the more it affects the melting point of various materials. So you don't see the negative here, but uh, you just assume that these are all negative. So let's look at something like magnesium oxide. That has a bonding energy of a thousand. So again, it's negative in actuality. Um, and so that has a very high melting point. Whereas something like water has a much lower bonding energy and therefore the melting point is much lower. So the equilibrium bond energy controls properties like the melting temperature. Also, uh, if we think about that bond force curve, the shape of it actually controls some properties as well. So let's think about this um, curve that we had. So it's the same one that we saw back in the previous slide. This is the spacing between those atoms or ions and then this is the force right so the same same curve well the slope here is the slope of the force versus um, distance and so that's basically saying if I stretch let's say stretch the the bonds apart so I move them further apart so I'm going to the right on this axis the energy is going uh, the force is going to go up all right, so if I try to move these two entities apart, the force goes up. If I try to move them closer together, the force goes down, right? Negative and then positive for these various terms. So the steeper the slope, the more force that it takes to move that given distance. And so this is related to uh, what we will talk about later in the class as the elastic modulus. So when talking about mechanical properties of materials, it's basically if I apply a force, how much does that displace the material? And so that is very much related to this slope of the, the curve. The steeper this is, the more force it takes to move for a given distance than something that has a very low slope it takes very little force to move the same distance. And so this is the elastic modulus. It's also termed uh, stiffness. So the higher values are stiffer materials because they take more force uh, to move. So we'll talk about this more when we get to elastic modules and mechanical properties later on in the semester. Um, other things that are a result of this bond energy and bond force, uh, here with the bond energy, the shape of it also matters. And so here we kind of see um, the result of that with thermal expansion. So as the temperature increases, 
Um, atoms gain energy, so they vibrate more and more as the energy uh, as the temperature increases, and so the separation increases, and so that's kind of depicted here with increasing temperature. So um, the separation distance between these atoms is related to this, right? So, so as energy increases, the distance increases. So um, the slope of this, uh, will, sorry, the, the shape of this depends on thermal expansion. So things that have a, um, a much greater um, shape uh, here will change the, um, the distance and therefore expand more with temperature. And so that really uh, makes a difference here in therm what we term thermal expansion, how much things change shape with temperature. So that's all going to go back to the Bond um, energy diagram. So it's basically, here's a, maybe a better look at that. Um, two materials, you see A and B. A has a very um, narrow or a relatively narrow uh, uh, kind of negative peak. And so it doesn't change as uh, much with temperature. Whereas the more broad B does change a lot more with increasing temperature. So deeper, more symmetric energy wells correspond to lower thermal expansion, uh, and then vice versa with the higher modulus. So lower values of thermal expansion, uh, but they would have a higher elastic modulus, and vice versa with B.